Okay, returning uh, to uh, the Zimbabwe, or well, the sanctions on Zimbabwe story, uh, just uh, what effects have those sanctions have had on the country of Zimbabwe? Joseph Busha of JM Busha Investments joins me now in studio to talk about this. Uh, Joseph, good to see you. Good evening. Good, good afternoon, Raila. This a statement here released uh, by, I think it's ZANU-PF uh, South Africa, says the economic sanctions uh, which were imposed following the country's stance to redistribute land uh, on a more equitable basis and correct the colonial, uh, colonial imbalances have been hurting uh, Zimbabwe. Is that correct? Well, the sanctions are certainly have been hurting Zimbabwe, uh, and not the people who were targeted for the sanctions. But that's not the story, the full story. It's just part of the story. Mm -hmm. So we need to be able to understand the entire picture is that was it just purely because of the land distribution or there are more issues uh, than land redistribution uh, in Zimbabwe. So I think we don't want to use this as a scapegoat. I mean, we are one of the first few guys who actually wrote, I wrote a letter to the United States to say the sanctions are certainly hating the ordinary man and they've never worked. And sanctions in many countries really where they've been imposed, the effects have been negative to the majority of the people, mm -hmm. not to the intended people, because they continue to fly. You just mentioned earlier on in your intro that President Nangagwa is in Russia, so it does not really affect as leaders. We're talking about sanctions on uh, 50, uh, just over 50 country, uh, companies in Zimbabwe and uh, certain individuals. Is Zimbabwe surely should be more than 50 odd companies and uh, certain individuals. Are those companies the crux of the Zimbabwean economy? These are the guys who are controlling everything. I think if you look in terms of the fuel, uh, you are aware that uh, you know, in about a month uh, ago, uh, there was issues about the guys who are controlling the fuel. We also know the guys who are basically uh, controlling the currency issue. You can go into a bank, you don't get the money, but if you go into the streets, you get the money. So who is printing the money, and how come the money is not uh, obtained uh, through the banking system? Uh, NASA, which is the, uh, state, uh, the, the pension fund, uh, also has been looted you know, by some of the senior officials in terms of um, trying to feather their businesses and uh, one of the ministers currently is out on bail. So, so in terms of control, certainly it could be between 50 to 100 people who have been controlling uh, the economic activity in Zimbabwe for their personal benefit. I mean that alone is, is, is a problem, surely. You can't have sanctions on so few people and then the whole country collapses. That doesn't make any sense. It does not. But unfortunately, this is the consequences of uh, global trade and leadership. I'm sure you've seen how some of the sanctions uh, or uh, acts that have been imposed by America have affected people, whether it's mm -hmm. in Syria, in Palestine, and in different parts of the world. But I think what we like here in Africa, and in particular Zimbabwe, was to be able to reform so that we benefit uh, yeah. the majority of our people. And you could also understand that you know, President Gabe, the late president, I understand that about more than 16 farms for one man. Yep. Let's talk about what uh, Nelson Chamisa, who's the leader of the opposition, the main opposition, the MDC, he says uh, Zimbabweans are suffering because of failed leadership, because of corruption, because of bad governance, and because of rigged elections, not because of these sanctions. Well, you know, I think that's incorrect. The sanction certainly has uh, hurt Zimbabwe. He's saying that purely because, uh, you know, he's in business with uh, Zano PF. Um, so he could not come and say, well, you know, it has suffered because not of sanctions, because he, his trucks were providing uh, services to uh, President Mugabe's uh, Gushungo's dairy farm. So, so I think we need to be very realistic and not be, you know, talk things out of political experience and be able to mention facts as they are. The issues that sanctions have affected Zimbabwe. You cannot do a business, you know, uh, uh, with uh, uh, overseas countries. Um, you remember Huawei. Uh, you know, the CEO was arrested in America and said, well, you can't do business with uh, this company if they, once they put you on sanctions list. So a lot of people would not find Zimbabwe. For example, DBSC here would not uh, do any infrastructure development uh, in, in Zimbabwe for country risk, not necessarily because of the sanctions, but they put it obviously as one of the countries with high country risk. But one of the issues, though, you have to admit uh, that has brought Zimbabwe to its knees has been corruption. 100%. Massive corruption in that country. 
whichever way you look at it. Massive corruption at every single level, 10, you know, every single level, whatever you want, you have to do somebody a favor. In other words, they're doing you a favor. That's and and you, you must just pay, whether you want uh, a passport, whether you want uh, to go through the police roadblock. So, so really, the corruption has gone to every single individual or, or, or state organ uh, in Zimbabwe, and that needs to be rooted out. And certainly, you know, for that to change, you need to change the entire political system in Zimbabwe. And the political system that has been there is ZANU-PF and MDC. I mean, MDC has been running the municipalities uh, in particular, or all the councils in, in Arare. And also you've seen dilapidation, uh, you know, in terms of the uh, deterioration, in terms of the function of those municipalities. I just want to read to you here a message or a statement by U.S. Senator Jim Rish. He's talking about, uh, he is the chairman of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. He's talking about uh, uh, this uh, sanctions, uh, this sanction march is taking place today. He says, responsibility for the current political and economic crisis in Zimbabwe falls solely on the ruling regime that has governed the country for decades. He goes on to say, if Zimbabwe's leaders put as much time, financial resources and effort into delivering on their long promised reforms. Let's talk about that word reforms, because a lot of these countries are calling for reforms yes. that don't yes. seem to be coming. Why is it so difficult for President Munangagwa to stick to these reforms and maybe they might see an end to the sanctions. If he does any reform, then they're out of power. You know, I've understood that, you know, those guys in politics, they don't want to make any changes that get them out of power or where they lose their grip to power. So some of the reforms really is opening to the media. You know, you need to have more television stations in Zimbabwe. We only have what's that BC. You need to have more independent uh, media from a newspaper perspective, print newspaper perspective. Uh, you also need to make sure that citizens have got the right and freedom to be able to associate and assemble uh, you know, I I freely. You know, civil liberties, they need to be there. So, so you can't do anything uh, in Zimbabwe without uh, uh, reporting to, 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 to the peace security or police. Um, you know, if you are more than seven people, you need to seek permission to be able to congregate. And those are some of the reforms we believe ourselves you know, that will uh, show to the entire world that you, know, you don't want to, um, you know, kind of rule by, by creed. You know, you want to make sure that people mm. are free. Joseph, lastly, though, we're looking at SADC uh, and uh, even out of SADC, other African countries supporting this uh, day against sanctions or marches against sanctions and so forth. Uh, one has to wonder at the same time, are these countries also looking at uh, the ruling party and saying, yes, we'll support your cause, sanctions are wrong, but at the same time, you also have to clean up your act. Today is a working day. I think they would rather put the day to better use rather than to declare a holiday uh, for, 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 for sanctions. So if you're doing demonstrations, who are you doing the demonstration against? So those demonstrations should not be happening against the citizens of the Zimbabwe. They should be doing them against the people in prison. So they must be actually having this uh, uh, much in America, not in Zimbabwe. Because if you're demonstrating against somebody, you go to the person's door. So if you have declare a holiday in a country where production is 10%, uh, certainly you're just killing yourself. All right, thank you so much. Uh, insightful stuff there. Uh, that was our guest, uh, Joseph Busha of J.M. Busha Investments.